Hey guys, it's Melissa Merritt with Web of Creativity, your Graphic 45 brand ambassador. And today I want to share with you my Level Up project. And what a Level Up project is, is when a brand ambassador takes a Club Graphic 45 project that's already been created and level it up. So the project that I took was the graphic uh, Club Graphic 45 Volume 7. This is a 2018 project. It's a wallet fold envelope album created by Annette Green. So she made this cool little wallet album and you can already get the printable sheet with the directions on how to make the album um, on the Graphic 45 website. There's a drop down menu that says printable project sheets and then you can go ahead and grab that. So the video that we're doing today is on how to create this box that holds the wallet album. So I made three wallet albums to fit in the box and then used the Graphic 45 Ephemera Queen paper collection. This is an 8x8 pad along with the die cut assortments. And then I took some cardstock, oh, and stickers. So I used some stickers, some cardstock. I used like a pink coral color. Um, a light blue, a dark teal, and then the cream for the base of everything. And then I did use some accent pieces created by um, Graphic 45's die. So we got some butterflies, this heart, um, the hello. Those are all Graphic 45 dies. And then these hearts right here is the only thing not Graphic 45, and it's a Spellbinders classic heart die. So I cut some of those out and used those for some decorating pieces. Um, so again, I created this box to hold the album and put some hinges and this cool latch. And then when you open it up, it holds the three wallet albums. So I'm going to show you, um, the video is going to go through how to make the box and decorate it and then how I decorated the wallet, wallet album. Um, but there's already a video that shows how to create the wallet album on the Graphic 45 uh, YouTube channel. So this video is not going to go through the construction of this as it's already been created. Um, but I am going to go through uh, matting and giving you the measurements on how I matted this particular album. And then what I did differently than um, the original. So first I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you can see I used one of the die cuts up there from the Metal Graphic 45 dies. Um, I did add some magnets for a closure. And then um, I took some stickers and added a cream colored background to a good portion of the stickers that I used. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and open that up. Then on the inside of the largest page, I made a pocket for tags and then created a flap. So I did a flap on the second page, the middle page. Then this is a full, a full um, page right here. And then I added some embellishments that you can slide your um, pictures under. And then this last section here, I added some hearts with some stickers and made it so you can put stuff behind them. And then added a back ground to this ephemera die cut piece um, and that is how I created this album again um, there's already a video on how to make um, make the wallet so you can check that out on graphic 45's YouTube channel so this one we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to work on making this box first and then how I matted and added um, some additional pieces to this album that's not on the original. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to work on the bottom part of the box. So this is a six by seven and a half piece of chipboard. That's the back side. The front is three and a half by seven and a half. The bottom is two by seven and a half. And then we got two sides that are one and seven eighths by six inches. The reason why it's cut a little bit shorter than the two inch is because it's going to sit 
on the inside. So the front and back sits on top of the bottom piece and then this is going to go sandwiched between the front and the back. So it's just going to be a bit smaller. To start off, we are going to get our hinges. So hinges are one inch strips that are scored in half. So I, I've already made um, four hinges. These are my inside hinges. So they're going to go um, on the inside for the front back and then the uh, two sides. But we're going to attach them to our front and back pieces first. So hinges are also um, tapered at the corner, which is cut at an angle. So I'm going to take my front piece and put my hinge. And then my two sides. So the hinge is gets attached flush. And this is a little bit too big. So how I measured my hinge is um, I just laid a strip. So I made a bunch of strips, scored them in half, and then just took one, laid it on there, made a mark, and then trimmed it off. Cut that one a little too big. Let's see if I made that one too big too. I sure did. So I'm just making my little bit mark. Cut it off so it fits. I like so. Let me move these out of the way. So we're going to attach our first one. So before I take this off, we're going to line it up on top of the bottom piece, flush to the side, and then we'll attach our hinge. So again, flush to the side. And then we're going to do the same thing with our back piece. So they're both on the inside track. So this guy's going to go in between um, our two pieces of chipboard. Just checking to see how it looks. Make sure it's flush against the edge. And that is the start of our box. For our side pieces, we're going to need um, two three inch by seven and one fourth. So this guy's gonna go, um, it's gonna have an overhang, sorry, about a half an inch on all sides. And now we need to add tape um, to this entire piece, so then we're going to attach this guy to it with the overhang. So I taped my side, which holds it together. And let's go ahead and remove. 
So again, when we attach it, we want about a half inch overhang on all sides. Okay, next step is we're going to cut to the corners at an angle so we can fold our paper um, so we can fold our paper, wrap our paper around the edge. So again, just cutting up to the corner. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now, once all of those are cut, we have this angle, this corner right here. So first, I'm just going to cut, cut it straight to this chipboard. So I cut it up to up against this ledge. And then I'm going to cut this. Nope, I'm going to leave it. Um, I was going to cut it at an angle, but I think it'll work just fine. Um, so my next step, because we do have to wrap it, is to get my bone folder. I'm just going to run it around the edge. That's to help um, it, it uh, to fold over. So when it's time to fold, it'll be a little bit easier. Oh, got a little paper nick. Okay, so before um, I get this um, attached, we're going to have to put some tape on it. So I'm just folding for the angle and then I'm just going to grab my tape. wrong angle so I'm just going to cut my tape at an angle. Tape sticking to my scissors. This is a little tight. Oh, please stop turning. There we go. Now I got all my pieces taped. Now we can attach them. Okay, then we're just going to wrap. attach our piece. There we go. 
go. Now we're going to uh, go ahead and wrap this side the same way. The next is our front and back pieces. So our back piece is seven and a half by seven and one fourth. And our front piece is seven and a half by four and five eighths. So this has um, seven and a half straight across so that's even, but I have an overhang of a half an inch at the top and bottom. And it's the same way with the back side. So overhang, top and bottom. So what we need to do is just cover the front and the back with tape. Okay, so I added tape to the front and the back. I already removed my tape backing. And this guy is going to go um, with an overhang of half an inch on the top and bottom. So I'm just going to lay it, start at the side, because I'm going to start flush at the side. Kind of lay it slow, using my fingers as a guide. There we go, and then we have our overhang here and here. Um, next, we're going to trim the corners, so we're just going to cut at an angle up to the corner. There we go, and then we're going to go ahead and take our bone folder and run it across the edge to score it and add our tape. one side okay now we can work on the front first I'm gonna make sure that this fits just perfectly where we want it. Oh, there we go. Overhang. So now we're going to cut from an angle. Now this angle is a little more because um, this this goes up to this one right here. So when we cut it, we wanna make sure that we're still gonna wrap the whole thing, but it not get stuck onto this one. So we're just gonna try, I might fold it a little bit so I can see it, because I wanna cut it all the way to the corner. So 
surface when, I, when it goes around, I want to make sure it doesn't hit that. I wonder if I, I can probably cut it from here. Or at least start it. There we go. That one is a little lot easier. Oh, I'm not in focus. Still not in focus. So that one was easier to cut from the bottom up. So I'd probably try from the bottom up on this side as well. Okay, now we can get our tape on. be a little bit more harder to do but we're gonna give it a shot folding it a little bit tricky but doable. Fold the folder. I'm not sure I can get this one in but I'm gonna, I'm gonna at least try. We have quite a few pieces for the inside and the bottom. So the bottom piece right here is seven and three eighths by one and seven eighths. The same is same measurement for the bottom on the inside. Um, the two side pieces are one and seven eighths by uh, five and seven eighths. So why an eighth is it's just a little bit smaller than this, um, the full piece, just so you can get that paper in there. Um, the back is uh, seven and three eighths by um, five and seven eighths. And the front is seven and three eighths by three and three eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and put tape on all of our papers. However, we are only going to attach the two bottom pieces, the bottom and bottom, and then the side pieces. Um, so the reason why we're not doing um, the back and the front is for our hinges um, and our metal piece for our closure. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all taped up. Okay, so before we attach everything, the bottom inside piece, you want to make sure that it fits um, in your piece without dropping it completely. So always just put it in like that and then put it in like this. If it bows, you need to trim it. So I did trim mine just a smidgen to get it to slide in there. So always check your piece before uh, you attach it, especially when it's on the inside bottom. There's 
that bottom piece. I'm actually going to add an extra adhesive with uh, my ATG straight down the middle. And he has just a little bit of a border. Um, not much, I just made it so it's a little bit smaller than the actual piece. All right, and then it also with the insides, anything on the inside, I always, you know, place in there first before attaching to make sure that you don't need to um, trim it a little bit. Because sometimes just cutting off a hair of paper will make it fit better than the actual size that you measured. And there's the inside. So we're gonna set those two aside and then work on the lid. For our two chipboard top pieces, we have one cardstock and it's uh, eight and a half by five and three fourths. We're going to attach the top piece first. And we're gonna have um, this be an overhang of half an inch on three sides. So let me grab my ruler and again half inch on three sides. Perfect. Then our next piece oh I tore the tape off. Use a bone folder to score. It's going to help because we're ha we're going to hold this at a 90 degrees angle. This is going to go on the inside of the chipboard, like so. And then we're going to bring the paper up. So before I do that, we're going to go ahead and that lined up. We're going to line it up. My fingers are going to attach to the tape. that 90 degree angle. Perfect. All right, and we're going to go ahead and taper our corners again. So we're just going to cut them at an angle up to the corner. And then um, I'm going to cut a V shape right where the uh, our uh, angle point is. Cut the middle line first just so I know where the, the middle part
part is. But if you can eye it without doing that, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so the next step is just to put tape all around the um, pieces here. All right, before I attach, um, definitely want to run my bone folder. Okay, next I want to hinge for the center piece. So making my hinge and I'm going to add my tape to it. Oh. So the tape's gonna go on the outside of the hinge. We like to call mountain side. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and attach our pieces. I always do opposite sides first. I think it makes the look just a little cleaner when everything is the same. Then we're going to do our hinge. Um, remembering that the bigger side um, is on top of this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my hinge piece on my bigger piece. It's the front piece first which is the um, three, two and a half inch piece. Okay, now first going to make sure that it is 90 degrees. Before we attach the hinges, we need to um, mat our box. So I, I did the box um, matting in three layers, and I'll give you those um, dimensions, but if you want to just do one layer, you can. So for um, my layer, I have it so there's a border on the sides and the bottom, but not the top. I have it flush to the top. So I have a solid color layer. Um, cream cardstock for the second layer and then pattern paper for the third all flush to the top so that's how my layer is for um, the bottom portion of the box the top portion and then the top lid uh, and then I have um, the side is also uh, layered so I have solid cream and then a pattern um, so I'll go ahead and give you all those dimensions and then if you just want the first layer it'll be the first dimension so we're gonna start with the largest piece right here for the bottom of the box so my solid color is seven and one fourth by three and a half my cream is seven by three and three eighths and my pattern is six and seven eighths by three and one fourth so the top portion of the lid I have is seven and one fourth by two and three eighths. The cream is seven by two and one fourth. And then the pattern is six and seven eighths by two and one eighths. So that will be layered. And this will be flush to the bottom with a border around the edge. Then we have the very top top up here. 
And that we have as seven and one fourth by one and three fourths. Uh, the cream colored is seven by one and a half. And then the pattern is six and seven eighths by one and three eighths. Okay, then we have our side pieces and they're all the same. So the, the first mat is one and three fourths by five and seven eighths. My cream colored is one and a half by five and five eighths. And my pattern is one and three eighths by five and a half. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, if you want, you can ink the edges. I use um, Distress Oxide Vintage Photo for my ink. Um, I do light handed, I don't do heavy. Um, I did not ink the cream colored, but you can. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach all these pieces to the box and then we'll work on the hinges. So I have the um, large, um, this is my latch, not my hinge, my large latch right here with my little piece. And then the hinges are um, scalloped edge. They're super cute. And we'll get those connected after our papers are connected. Okay, I have finished matting the box. So now we need to put our hinges on. So we're going to take this part off. And we're going to put our hinge on first. And I'm going to move my hinge to an inch and a half. And then draw my circle inside. And that's where I'm going to use my pokey tool to poke a hole through my chipboard. Sometimes it's helpful to have a third hand, which I don't have. Okay. Perfect. Um, so I just use this pink pokey tool and just make sure your fingers are out of the way so you don't poke yourself. And then we're just going to do that for all the holes. I got all my holes poked through. I'm going to go ahead and put my brads in. Okay, flip over and make sure all my brads are parallel with the, um, the chipboard. And so let me turn my brads. Now I'm just going to press down on it real hard. Okay. Oh, and that's why we don't cover the inside until after our brads are attached. So, um, there's our two hinges. Okay, so now we're going to set our box lid and make sure it's um, even on both sides. And then we're gonna trace the best we can in our little holes. Now these are just a little close to the top edge. So we have to be careful when poking our holes to make sure it's closer to the bottom of that circle than the top because we don't want it to cut 
um, the chipboard. So uh, and now if it does cut the chipboard and you don't want to make a new box, um, try gluing. Or if, if you're too nervous about it, um, you can just put the hinges on, on here and then just glue these pieces down. So it looks like, or hinges, put the brads on here and then um, glue your hinges down. Um, if, if that's better for you since it is kind of close to the top of the box. So then we're going to take our pokey tool like we did the other time and just get those holes. Alright, so I got my holes. And we're just going to set these on here the best we can. There we go. I'm holding them down so when I open this, um, they'll be uh, flush to the wall. Oops. We want to make sure these brads are tight and flat. So again, I'm going to... Um, I am not left-handed, but I'm going to try it. Holding the brads closest to the wall to make sure we get a tight fit. Okay. And I'm going to move that down a little bit. And there we go. So we'll have paper that's going to cover that. And that is part. We still need to get our latch done. But there is our hinges. So for the latch, we're going to go ahead and... So this guy is going to get put in there. I think we're going to do the top portion first and once that's attached get an idea of where this guy's going to go. So let's, so when this comes up we want it to be about there. That looks good and probably want to make sure it is um, even in the middle, centered, centered. Okay. I pretty much had it centered. That's pretty good. So again, I'm going to move this down a little bit. There we go. So I lined up this with this. So when it closes, it'll close on here. And then when it lifts up, this part will be attached. So I got my holes. I'm going to go ahead and poke them. Alright, have my holes in place. There's that, and then we need to attach this guy. So we need this to come up. I moved it, of course I moved it. All right, perfect. There we go. All right, I now have my two holes for the second part of the latch. This one I'm going to use my fingers because it's going to be hard to get that tool in there. 
Yep, nope, that's... Okay. Just twisting and turning to loosen that up a little bit. Okay. Latch and latched. Oh, that is cute. Okay. All right, so for the front of the box, I grabbed some of the die cut assortment pieces for this collection and then just used um, a cream cardstock backing. So I just cut out a backing that's a little bit bigger than the actual piece. I did that for the square pieces and for the scallop pieces and cut out some circles that were a little bit bigger. Um, grabbed some hearts and swirlies and then of course some pop dots. Uh, so my other pieces I have is this um, flag with the hello cut out. Hello is um, from uh, Graphic 45 metal die. And then the flag here is three inches by one and one fourth. And then I cut out two smaller pieces to stack on top of it. Um, and then got my cut out this little hello so I can put in the bottom corner. For this guy, I did two of the die cuts and attached with just a little bit of adhesive, um, removable adhesive, and put it on a piece of cream cardstock. Now, how I did this is I took my ruler and I marked um, an eighth of an inch on all the angles, drew, drew my lines, and then trimmed it out. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, attach this better, but this is how I did my outline and my cutout for this piece. And then I'm going to set it here. So I'm going to trim this part off so it doesn't hang, but I think I'm going to put that there with, um, you know, one of these pieces and put one of these pieces up here, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this decorated and then show you what I did. And here is the finished product. So I pop dotted that and this little heart here. And that is the front of the box. The final step for the box is to cover the inside where the brads are. So we're gonna, um, for the lid piece, we got seven and three eighths by two and three eighths, and then seven and three eighths by one and seven eighths. Um, now that's uh, making a small border around it. So if you um, don't like eighths, you can do seven and one fourth by two and one fourth and seven and one fourth by one and three fourths. Um, so with these pieces, we want to make sure we cover the brad. Uh, the top one will be easy because the brads are lower. Um, but the ones that are close to the edge, we want to keep the paper close to the edge. Uh, so for the back wall here, this is seven and three eighths by five and seven eighths. And the inside wall um, is seven and three eighths by three and three eighths. So the, what I'm gonna do is, where's my tape? Um, is cover these brads up here because they won't get covered by the tape on the paper. So we're going to go ahead and cover this brad. This is so the brads don't move around under your paper. But um, these brads right here will get covered with the tape on this paper right here. So I'm not worried about those. And then I'll need to cover these brads on the inside. And then we'll go ahead and attach the paper. Now the ones that are inside the box here... Um, when you trim your paper, just make sure that it fits uh, nicely in there and you might have to trim off any pieces because of the chipboard, how the chipboard sits. So always um, put your piece in there first to make sure that it's going to slide in there and not have any problems. And if you have any problems, then just um, trim off a little bit of your paper. I've made three albums to go inside the box. These are 
uh, wallet fold envelope albums. So this is a Graphic 45, Club Graphic 45, Volume 7, created by Annette Green. This is 2018 Volume 7. And um, I made the um, album exactly like Miss Annette Green did. So I followed the directions on the printable sheet and you can find the printable project sheet on Graphic 45. It's g45papers.com and there's a drop down menu um, and the bottom of the menu has printable sheets. So again this is the 2018 Club 45 Volume 7 a wallet fold envelope album. So I'm not going to go over how to make the album It's since it's already been done. Uh, there's a written tutorial and there is a video. The video is on Graphic 45 blog um, YouTube channel. So uh, I, I've made it the exact same way. So the only difference is that I'm changing for this level up project um, is how, how I decorated it. I've also added some magnet closures um, and some pieces and, and flair and all that good stuff. So that's the stuff that we're going to go through. Uh, but let's go ahead and show you the album. So um, we got our flap and we have two large flaps, two medium flaps, and then two small flaps, and then this large area. So in this, in this portion of the video, we're going to go through how I am um, matting and decorating the album. So I'm going to start off with the front cover. So un unlike hers, um, Annette, she got some decorations in the top and the bottom corners and then has the metal keyhole pieces. Um, I'm pretty sure Graphic 45 is out of these keyhole pieces. So instead I'm using um, some of the die cut assortment pieces for our focal point for the middle of this album. So what I got, let me pull out my sheets here. So I got my papers, which I still have to punch the corners on. And the size of these is also um, in this sheets, but I am going to go through uh, what I did because not all of mine are uh, full matting. And then for my focal point, because I'm making this a magnet closure, I got this large clock piece. It's so beautiful. And I cut out a circle of cream cardstock for my backing so it doesn't um, blend in with this piece. And then that's going to be my focal point for the cover. So the clock piece is about four inches and my cream um, circle is four and one fourths inches. And then these mats are six and three fourths by three inches. So we want the outside pieces and the um, inside. So I'm going to start with that, but we're going to attach our magnets first. And then, of course, we need to punch our paper, our corners. This is um, a half inch corner rounder. Let me move my magnets. So we're going to start with um, our magnet closure. So we're going to want it about there, I think. So we're going, but we're going to put it on the inside. Um, so we're going to attach our bottom one first, and then attach it to the top portion. So we definitely want it centered. Let me take that. I know it's a little hard to see because of the cream cardstock. Um, let me get my scissors, cut my tape. And um, I'm going to put it about. I might move it. Let me see where it sits on the front. Okay, that's good. Um, I just didn't want it so close to the edge. So that looks good to me. Let me move this off. So what I'm going to do is put a piece of paper. Makes it a little bit easier to um, get the magnets to pull apart. 
when you're attaching them this way. Oh. And then we're gonna close. Make sure my cover is even. Use the paper to get them apart. And now I can add some extra tape to them. So now that our magnets are attached in the center, um, I'm gonna go ahead and corner around the paper and then ink it with uh, Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. This is what it looks like attached. And then we can move on to the flaps. So for the flaps, um, I have a full mat and that is six and three fourths by four and three fourths. But I'm adding a flag um, and attaching it. And that flag is um, five inches and then I scored a half an inch so I can attach that tab by two inches. And then I have um, the mat for the flag. So the mat is four and one fourth by one and three fourths. So how to make the flag is when you cut out the piece, we're gonna mark, we're gonna flip our flag piece over. This goes for the flag and the mat. And we're going to mark uh, half an inch up centered. And we're gonna draw a line from that center point to the corner. Do the same thing to the other side, center point to the corner, and then just cut. So my flag pieces are always a half an inch in, at least for this album, they're a half an inch in. Uh, it's the same way as how I did it for um, the front of the box has the um, three flags. Okay, so then I'm going to put, attach that like so for the flag. And then I have some extras. So the die cut pieces, I got a butterfly and a heart. And then um, the sticker, I just made an out line with the creamed cardstock and then um, punch the corners with a stub punch. Now the stub punch is the one that I have, if I can find it, is we are memory keepers. And if you use a full punch, you get a scrap paper. It's, um, it's a lot deeper. So you got that deep mark and these stickers aren't that deep. So you can see the difference between the little and the big. So what I did is I just I lined it up and then I pulled it out as centered as possible and then punched. So you might wanna practice on a scrap paper before you do it on um, your this paper. Uh, or, you know, do your four punches before you attach your sticker to make sure they look good and even. So then I'm gonna have like the, the heart and put this and then this, something like that. Um, throughout the album, I also made other little hearts. So these guys is actually a Spellbinders die, um, classic heart. So I did make some more hearts for the, out the album. And then I have some butterflies. Now these are graphic 45 die. And Graphic 45 has several of the butterfly metal dies. Uh, so with this guy, I'm, pro I'm going to layer him. So he's going to be like a little layered. Uh, not for this section, for the other set, for my second page. So this is my first flap. And then my second flap is going to be this guy with this flag. I'm gonna make the flag the same way. Um, I have the stickers. Um, these are stickers as long as, as well as the dream 
for the collection and then I just made a backing for it. So I have those stickers and then I'm going to use um, the hearts and the butterfly uh, to decorate this little flag piece. So uh, these need to be punched and inked um, and then I, I, I think I'm going to magnetize my flag so it stays down. And then I'm going to leave this open so you can either do journaling or small stickers or um, or whatever you want. But I think it's a good spot for journaling. So you put your picture here and then you write down, you know, a little thing about it. I thought it was a great idea. Okay, let me get working on that. Okay, we're going to attach the flag. Um, I'm going to attach it three-fourths of an inch up. So what I did was I tapered the corners and added tape to my little tab here. Um, it's about, and then I want it flush to the edge of my flap. Perfect. Now I'm going to add a magnet. So first I'm going to add some tape to it. And I'm just going to put him about right there. I'm going to take this guy, oops, I'm just trying to get a piece of tape off, add my tape to my magnet, and then close my flag, add tape to this magnet, open, and then add tape to this magnet. Perfect. I'm going to attach my mat. Oh, that might look better. I was going to have a full border, but I might. Yep, I'm going to make this paper flush. Go ahead and attach um, this guy here and then put my little pieces on the flag. And then here's the completed piece. All right, now I'm gonna work on that one. All right, our next step is to decorate the inside, um, the other side of the large flap and then the medium flap. Uh, so if you want the full mat, yeah, it'll be the same as the front, but I did two partial mats. So I took my pattern paper and cut it in half. So this is four inches, um, four inches by four and three fourths for both of those. And then I separated them. The second section um, for the inside is uh, I'm going to create a pocket with the solid color paper. And that is... Um, two and uh, five eighths by four and three fourths. And then this guy is uh, seven eighths by four and three fourths. Um, so we're gonna do those. And then I have a flap that's going to get attached right here. And that flap is three and a half by four and one eighths. And then I scored it a half an inch. So here's my score line and then I'm going to attach it to the flap here and then the mat um, I did the solid color for the mat and that is two and three fourths by three and seven eighths and then I'm going to use um, I'm going to use my heart to die again spellbinders classic heart and then I cut it in half and I'm going to attach it as a little accent for this flap and I'll put that right there. Um, okay, so I'm not going to, I need to round these corners. Um, I'm gonna keep these not rounded and I think I'm going to keep these straight edged and not rounded as well. Um, so let me get that and inked and attached. Um, okay, a couple of things um, when attaching. 
The pocket you have in a U shape before you attach. I used a um, half an inch corner rounder. And then we're gonna attach our um, flap flush to the edge um, in between the um, punched um, circles. So we're gonna do it in the center. I'm gonna turn this so I can see it. There we go. And because it does stick up, I'm going to use a magnet. So we're gonna go ahead and attach. I'm gonna put some tape on my magnet. So I'm putting my tape on my magnet. I'm gonna go ahead and put it just right in the center. Attach that guy. Put a piece of tape. Then close my flap for my placement. And then just put tape on your uh, magnet and then put your mats down. All right, let me go ahead and finish matting my page. Okay, I finished um, just decorating. I put the half heart there uh, with the butterfly and the heart and that's a uh, graphic 45 die. And then I got this tag right here and that is four by five and a half. And I just put a little border sticker there. Um, if you want a full size mat, it is five and one fourth by three and three fourths. So again, this mat is uh, four by five and a half. That's right there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and do um, a similar layout on this side. Oop, not, not that. On this side. <laughs> For the next set of pages, I have uh, mirrored image pages. So the paper is four by four and three fourths. And then I got um, some stickers that I added a border to. And then I'm going to add um, hearts for a little decoration. And then for the smaller mat, um, my mats are three and one fourth by four and three fourths. And then I have some strips. Um, the strips are three and one fourths by one and one fourth. And then the mat is one inch. So that's going to go right here. So those are these mats for um, this section of pages. Okay, this is what it looks like all put together. And what I did for the sticker is I only attached one um, side to it so you can slide your photo underneath it or um, put a little tag there or whatnot. Um, I attached these all the way down, but you could attach just the sides and slide something down underneath it. All right, now we're gonna work on the last section. For our next pieces, uh, we have full mats for the flaps, and that's three and one fourth by four and three fourths. And in the middle here, we have um, separated mats. So let me move those. And then one mat in the middle. And this guy's are uh, six and five eighths by uh, one and one fourth for the little ones. And then um, three and one fourth for the big one in the middle. And then I got one of the cutout pieces and put um, a backing on it to attach here. And then I'm going to do, um, then I put some stickers on some hearts for the pages right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach everything. All right, this is um, my finished um, page. So I attached my hearts, but I left it um, open. So you can put tag or um, picture behind and then I left this one open too. So uh, that is it for the project. Um, and then you can make uh, two more. Oops, wrong one. I just did the front covers of both of those. So I took a die cut piece and then just put um, a backing on it and then added. So that is it. 
Um, the books are done. The box is done. For more projects, please visit um, my website at www.webofcreativity.net. Thank you for watching.